I feel a bit ill. I'm stopping there. Today we're doing a simple experiment. We're gonna find out if ultra processed foods make us eat more calories. And by extension, if they're making us overweight too. So I'm gonna eat two different bowls of nutritionally matched food and I'm gonna see which one I can eat more of. It's a simple experiment. The only difference is that one will be homemade food and the other one will be ultra processed food. We're gonna see if we can find out whether ultra processed foods are an important factor in how much food we eat and therefore if it also has an impact on how fat we get too. Now, if you've ever tried to lose weight and you failed, you might be beating yourself up about it. But how would you feel if I told you that it might not actually be your fault at all? You see, we live in an environment, especially towns and cities, where we're having highly processed foods or foods high in fat, salt and sugar pushed onto us on a daily basis. And some of the best research around ultra processed foods suggests that they might enable us to eat more calories than we really need. So today we're going to recreate a simple but very famous experiment carried out by a guy called Kevin Hall. And we're going to find out whether ultra processed foods simply make you eat more calories. So why is this important? Uh, around the world, we're seeing body sizes increase and there's a correlation between increased body size and increased health issues. It's as simple as that. Now, you might think, oh, look at this skinny, privileged white dude. He's never like had any problems with his body size. Well, back when I was a beer and kebab loving 30 year old, I was rapidly careering into obesity. I'd love to tell you how much I weighed in this photo. However, I didn't weigh myself back then. So I literally have no idea what my BMI was. What happened was I got bored of buying larger jean sizes every year and also my shoes wearing out quickly. And I was also getting out of breath just walking upstairs. So I decided to lose some weight or well get rid of the fat anyway according to the nhs calculator my bmi was around 29.5 and that was once i'd started losing weight so i was basically on the border of being an obese i got rid of around 30 kilograms or nearly five stone of fat from the point when i did begin weighing myself which was after i had lost a little bit of weight so yeah i know what it's like to want to lose a significant amount of weight and i know how hard it is because i didn't do it on my first try so what is the experiment? The basic mechanism of how we gain or lose weight is energy balance. Now, the reasons why we might gain or lose weight are much more complicated. However, this is one of the underlying principles. If we consume too much energy in the form of calories, we get heavier. If we consume less, we get lighter. Uh, I'm gonna do a simple experiment. I'm gonna eat two meals. Well, if you can call them meals. They're both nutritionally matched across energy and macronutrients per 100 calories, e.g. the balance of calories, protein, carbohydrate, fat and salt is the same. We're replicating a famous study that was carried out by Kevin Hall in 2019, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. We're going to see if the results of my experiment matches his. One day I'll eat a meal that is home cooked and then on another day I'll eat a meal that is just ultra processed foods, a meal in inverted commas, this is very simple. The key element being that I'm allowed to eat as much as I want at each meal. Then afterwards, once I've reached a level of fullness, we'll weigh the food and we'll see how many calories of each meal I ate. So what are the meals? Well. I'm doing a lot of triathlon training right now, so I need a lot of calories, especially carbohydrate. So I'm gonna leave space in my meal plan at the end of the day for a thousand calories. On Tuesday night, I'm gonna eat thinly sliced potatoes roasted in olive oil for dinner. And on Thursday night, I'm gonna eat Pringles for dinner. Yeah. <laughs> I've gone to great care to make sure that these are equally balanced nutritionally. Now they will weigh different amounts, but that's mainly because the potatoes will still have a bit more water in them. The Pringles will be lighter because they contain almost zero water. I'll put the nutritional values for both meals on screen now so you can see how they're almost exactly the same across all of the macronutrients. Now, interestingly, the potatoes are actually cheaper to make. Even if we included the cost of running the oven for an hour, they'd still be cheaper. Although the Pringles basically are much quicker to make. First up, I need to roast a ton of potatoes and buy quite a lot of Pringles too. I'm gonna to do my triathlon training like normal each day and then eat a normal diet up to the evening, focusing on protein earlier in the day to ensure I hit my macros there. Then I'm just gonna sit down and eat until I feel full. Now I've calculated this per calorie, so 100 calories of Pringles will supply exactly the same amount of nutrition as 100 calories of potato. Water is one of the reasons why your food goes off quicker, so when you remove it you extend the life of the food. That's why the Pringles have a lot, much longer shelf life than the roasted potatoes. So here's how it all went. 
350 grams of potatoes with 2.3 tablespoons of olive oil and one gram of salt is 540 calories, which was almost exactly the same as 100 grams of Pringles, which is 534 calories. I made two kilograms of potatoes, which is 3,085 calories. And then I got three tubes of Pringles, which is 2,963 calories. So very similar amounts, around 3,000 calories in each bowl. The pile of potatoes cooked down from two kilograms down to about one kilogram. <sighs> Let's do this. I've just got back from a 90 minute run, so I am starving. Now, because I track my macros every day, I know that I've eaten enough protein and fat today to see me through. What I do need is about another thousand calories of carbohydrate. This bowl was two kilograms of potatoes, which has been now cooked down with some olive oil and some salt. Every hundred calories of this has exactly the same amount of carbohydrate, protein, fat, and salt as Pringles do. So there's about 3000 calories in here, which is more than I need. So I'm gonna eat this and uh, well, let's see when I get full. So I have weighed this and there was 1100 grams after cooking. This is ridiculously oily. Mm. And crazy salt. That is so salty. Mmm, really tasty. To make this entire bowl, I had to use six teaspoons of salt, which is a huge amount. I would never ever put that much salt on something normally. However, now I understand why Pringles have so much salt because the balance of flavors between the fat and the salt is pretty damn tasty. Yeah, I'm definitely reaching the first stage of being full now. It just started to feel a little bit of an effort to eat this. Not because it's hard to chew, it's very, in fact, they're quite soft, so I've let them cool down a bit. <clears throat> but my stomach is definitely feeling like it's had enough. <clears throat> I just had that moment where I put something in my mouth and my stomach said, don't do it anymore. I don't need any more. The connection between mouth and stomach, there was a disconnect. I feel a bit ill. I'm stopping there. There was 1104 grams in this bowl to start with. <clears throat> and now I've finished. I'm gonna put the leftovers in here and I'm weighing it to see how much there is. There's 564 grams left. So I've eaten 540 grams of this. We need to do the maths, but that's roughly one and a half thousand calories. And I feel a little bit sick looking at this now. Now two days since I ate those potatoes, I gave myself a day off just to let myself recover from eating all of that potato. Now these three cheese of Pringles in theory contains the same amount of calories as all of the potato and oil that I had in this bowl just two days ago. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pour all of these into this bowl and then I'm just gonna start eating them and see, well, how much I eat. Cause I don't wanna prejudice myself by knowing how much of these I've eaten. Now, Pringles, obviously, we know they are weighed 185 grams per tube. And the way I calculated it is, in fact, the calories are almost exactly the same as my potatoes the other day. So the calories are exactly the same, but also the fat, protein, carbohydrate, and salt is exactly the same amount per 100 calories of food as well. Now, I couldn't match them per weight of food because I would have had to have completely dehydrated the potatoes to have done that. However, in theory, the main difference between the two should simply be that the potatoes had more water in them. So, uh, on y va, as the French say, on y va. So what I'm looking for here is how long it takes until I feel full. How many of these am I going to eat before I think, like, that's it? Because when I did the potatoes the other day, I got to a point where I was like, mm. I felt sick looking at them. And my stomach was really full as well. Like, I, I, I genuinely really felt like I had eaten plenty of food. 
This 3,000 calories looks like more than the 3,000 calories of potato. Like that. That's a lot of Pringles to eat. I'm officially sick of eating these now. Not full, but sick of eating them. I think I'm going to stop soon. There's obviously that feeling of not wanting to eat them isn't very pleasant. I don't want to make myself sick for these challenges. And it's interesting that I could comfortably eat a lot more. Give me a challenge. If you said, Gav, I'll give you £2.50 if you can eat the rest of the bowl, then there's a good chance that you might see me ploughing through. I'm going to stop there and I'm going to weigh them now and we'll see what's left. There were 555 grams of Pringles to start with. So if I've eaten more than half, then Ooh, that's a hard one to do. 250, 275, 277 and a half. If there's less than 277 and a half, then I've eaten more calories. Yep. So 239 grams left, so I've eaten just over half, but I easily could have eaten a lot more. I wasn't at, by any means near my limit. Okay, that wasn't quite as much fun as I thought it would be. <laughs> I honestly thought that just eating loads and loads of food would be really, really good fun, but you know what? No, it wasn't. The study that we were recreating was Kevin Hall's 2019 study where he fed a bunch of participants a diet of home cooked food and a diet of ultra processed food for a month. Both of the diets were matched nutritionally, just the same as I've done here. Halfway through the experiment, he swapped people around. So those who were eating home cooked started eating ultra processed and vice versa. Now the results were astounding. In all cases, the participants ate on average 500 calories more per day when they were eating the ultra processed food diet. So what happened? Here, for me, there was 1,104 grams of potato and then were 564 grams left, which meant I ate 540 grams. So the full amount was 3,085 calories, which means that I actually ate 1,508 calories of potatoes. When it came to the Pringles, there were 239 grams left, which meant I ate 316 grams, which means that was 1,687 calories of Pringles. Which basically means I ate around 180 calories more of Pringles, which is about 12%, without trying that hard and easily could have eaten more. But then something very fascinating happened. Half an hour after eating the Pringles, I had the worst bloating. I was like right out here. And then, it gets worse. About two hours after finishing, I walked through the kitchen and I saw the bowl on the side that contained the remaining Pringles. And I was like, ooh, ooh, let's have some of those. And before you know it, I'd eaten literally another quarter of a tube. I wasn't even fed up. I literally had to wrestle them away from myself and physically separate the bowl of Pringles to stop eating them. And I think this is incredibly significant. You see, when I ate the potatoes, there were leftovers and I had no desire to eat them that evening. And two days later, I put some in an omelette at lunchtime. However, the remainder are still in my fridge. And I look at them and I'm like, oh, not sure I want to eat that many of those. So what does it tell us? Well, it supports Kevin Hall's study that when it comes to eating potatoes, <laughs> it's much, much, much easier to eat potatoes that are ultra processed than it is to eat potatoes that are home cooked. Therefore, it's much easier to eat an excessive quantity of calories. So. If you are trying to lose weight, one of the best things you can do is try and eat more home-cooked food. Simple.